We are back at 812 with more on our special series, Mr. Smith Goes to the Smithsonian, unlocking some really remarkable stories behind objects held in the museum's Washington, yeah. D.C. area. Today, we've got an item from the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And, and Harry, this is a good one, mm -hmm. uh, a special one indeed. Good to see you, my friend. Good morning to uh, both of you. I'll tell you, uh, this was one of those stories that just unfolded in so many profound and really wonderful and powerful ways. A warning to those who are viewing this morning, there's language in this story that reflects some of the hatred and the vitriol that this student who wore this dress faced all those years ago. A black print dress adorned with the letters of the alphabet in white and blue and teal. To whom did it belong? What are we looking at here? That is the uh, dress that I wore on the first day of attending Little Rock Central High School. Carlotta Walls Lanier was excited about attending a new school where she hoped to fit in. My mother took me downtown and we picked out this dress. I wanted to look like any other student, I, new clothes, new shoes. It was Carlotta's first store-bought dress. Little Rock Central was known as one of the best in the country and a significant step up from the all-black high schools in the city. I never had a new book to put my name in. It was always the eighth or ninth name. Handed so, down from the white schools. Handed down from the white schools. 1954. Brown versus Board of Education. The Supreme Court agreed with Thurgood Marshall and ruled that segregated schooling violated the Constitution. When the opportunity arose to attend Little Rock's all-white Central High School, Carlotta did not hesitate. Were your parents aware that you were signing up? <laughs> not really. Did they I, back you? It, oh, they backed me. We were taught this every day that if you have an opportunity, be prepared to go through the door. Whether it's a crack in the door or it's flung wide open, that you need all the education possible. Clad in her new dress, Carlotta first attempted to go to school on September 4th, 1957. But Carlotta and her black classmates, who came to be known as the Little Rock Nine, were met by an angry mob torrents of racial epithets showered down on the hopeful teenagers. Could you hear what was oh, yeah. going on in the mob? Oh, I, I heard all of the name calling and so forth. All of that was like water off a duck's back for me. On their way to the school entrance, Carlotta and the other black students were stopped by the Arkansas National Guard, ordered there by Governor Orville Faubus not to protect the new students, but to prevent them from entering the school. The shock and disappointment plain on Carlotta's face. Carlotta would not return to the school until September 23rd. The guard was gone, but the mob had grown. Now a thousand furious white segregationists were there to protest. The Little Rock Nine snuck in, but barely made it to third period. We were all escorted to the bowels of the school where there were two police cars and we were told to get into these cars. And one policeman had said, you know, they're wanting to hang one of these niggas. Which one should we basically give to the crowd? You know, is how... That was the conversation in the mob. With police. The, no, no, two policemen. To two policemen. Right, saying they are wanting one of these kids to lynch. President Dwight Eisenhower had seen enough. On September 25th, the Little Rock Nine had an escort, the 101st Airborne. He calls out, not just the Army, but the 101st, 101st Airborne. Airborne. The most prestigious group that we had, who had made a name for themselves in World War II. But even with a member of the 101st Airborne by her side, the white students of Central High still found ways to let her know she was not welcome. People are spitting on you? Yes. People are spitting on me. They are calling me names. They're knocking me into the walls. If they knock my books out and I pick the books up, you better have your backside to the wall, otherwise you get kicked in the rear. 
Despite the spit and the kicks, Carlotta made the honor roll that fall. Her report card also at the Smithsonian. Did you know how courageous you were? We were just doing what we were supposed to do. We were going to school. That's all we were wanting to do, to get the best education available. I really didn't understand any of that until I was a parent myself and really realized that the real heroes and sheroes in this were really our parents to allow their children to continue to go each day. The governor shut the school down for a year. Her home was attacked, and yet she persisted. And in the spring of 1960, Carlotta became the first black girl to graduate from Little Rock Central High School. I remember my name being called, and I walked up to the principal and to the superintendent, received my diploma, but did I hear anything, any clapping or anything of that nature? No. But that was okay. I had completed what I started. Carlotta Waltz Lanier wrote a book about all of this, came out about 10 years ago. It is such a good read. It's called A Mighty Long Way. And in a long career of doing these sorts of things, one of the honors of my life, pre-COVID, of course, because we were so close together, was to be able to sit down and have a conversation with her. An amazing, amazing woman. And that, that point that, uh, that she made about parents back then being willing, being able to allow their children to go to schools like that day in and day out. Thank God she wore, thank God she found that dress and wore that dress and graduated from from Central High School. And here's the thing, Gary. Go go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say. No, I was just going to say, you know, because the the buildings of the Smithsonian are closed, but for people, uh, it doesn't matter if you're being able to go to, your kids can go to school or not. The Smithsonian has amazing numbers of online learning resources, labs, including one on integration in which the, the, the dress story is told. So mm. they just have this amazing array of uh, opportunities for which you can learn all kinds of great stuff online. America's Attic online. Uh, Harry, thank you. That was another great one. Just beautiful. Amazing to hear her tell her story in her own words and striking to think about how much courage she had to have. A determination just to learn, yeah. she said. And, and here's the thing. It wasn't that long ago. It wasn't that uh, long when ago. When you look at the, the arc of history in this country, it wasn't that Sure long is ago. humbling.